Eva Luna is in her City Heights apartment getting ready for work. She's a nanny for a family in Kensington just two and a half miles away. It's less than a 10 minute drive, but Luna doesn't have a car. So she leaves herself more than an hour to get to work. On Thursdays, I have to take my son to school. I get farther from work, so it's one and a half hours every Thursday morning. Luna usually walks the full two and a half miles because that's actually faster than taking the bus. There's one here in this area that moves some blocks, but not in the direction I'm going. Sometimes it's very tiring to have to walk every day. We don't have a network that, that is efficient, that can get us to places we want to go. Monique Lopez works for the advocacy group Environmental Health Coalition. She loves San Diego's ambitious climate action plan. It calls for boosting public transit commuting from 10% to 25% in 20 years. But to get people to stop driving, she says we have to make other options easier. Folks who do have the luxury of a vehicle oftentimes feel locked in that vehicle because they don't have a real option to transit. Spending on roads, public transit and bike lanes is decided by the San Diego Association of Governments, or SANDAG. The group just released a revised plan for how to spend $200 billion on transportation over the next 35 years. Lopez says it spends too much on freeways and roads. As the regional transportation plan stands now, it's going to be very difficult for the city of San Diego to achieve its climate action plan goals. Sandag's transportation planning director, Mug Stoll, says the agency is always looking for ways to speed up the transit system. That's what the rapid, the new rapid that comes down the I-15 corridor is all about. That's what the new rapid uh, through from San Diego State to downtown along, along El Cajon Boulevard and Park. Park Boulevard are all about is to try and increase the, the efficiency of the system, including frequencies of the, uh, the, uh, the bus. They say that, hey, we're putting money into transit, but the way they're doing it is they are expanding freeways left and right, and they're throwing bus rapid transit on top of those expanded lanes. And then they're also throwing carpool on that, and then they're also throwing potentially fast track passes on that. That's problematic because that's not real transit benefits. That's an excuse to add more lanes. A new rapid bus won't help Ava Luna. Coming down now. Thank you. While the bus system has routes that can take her east to west, no bus would take her north in the direction she needs to go so she can ride about a half mile down University Avenue, but then she's left walking. Stoll says Sandag may spend more on public transit, but not right away. As we move out into the later years of the plan, um, depending on how funding becomes available, we are proposing to provide more transit operations funds to be able to increase the, the frequency and the, and the convenience of the existing major bus routes within the region as well. That could still be 30 years away. In the meantime, Luna has different plans. I'd like to have a car, but right now, because I'm so busy, I don't have time to teach myself to drive. And sometimes I can't get other jobs because transportation takes a lot longer. If you were to shave off five minutes every day of a five-day commute, you would gain 40 hours in one year. That's huge. And so what that could mean is a better quality of life for, for Eva and her family. Lopez says targeting residents like Luna who don't have cars is an easy way for the city to boost its public transit numbers. If Luna gets a car, she'd be moving the numbers in the wrong direction. Claire Tregesser, KPBS News.